could not understand all his teachings and I could not accept them fully, nor was I able, with all I saw while I was in the East, to fully accept at the time. It required years of meditation to bring me the realization of the deep spiritual meaning of these people's lives. Their work is accomplished without ostentation and in perfect childlike simplicity. They know the power of love to protect them and they cultivate it until all nature is in love with them and befriends them. Thousands of the common people are killed annually by serpents and wild animals. Yet these masters have so brought forth the power of love in themselves that the serpents and wild animals do not injure them. They live at times in the wildest jungles and sometimes they lay their bodies down before a village to protect it from the ravages of wild animals and no harm befalls the village or themselves. When occasion requires, they walk on water, go through fire, travel in the invisible and do many other things that we have been accustomed to look upon as miracles performed only by one supposed in some way to possess supernatural powers. There is a striking resemblance between the life and teaching of Jesus of Nazareth and those of these masters as exemplified in their daily life. It has been thought impossible for man to derive his daily supply directly from the universal to overcome death and to perform the various so-called miracles that Jesus performed while on earth. The masters prove that all these are their daily life. They supply everything needed for their daily wants directly from the universal, including food, clothing and money. They have so far overcome death that many of them now living are over 500 years of age, as was conclusively proven by their records. There are comparatively few of these masters in India, other cults seeming to be but offshoots of their teaching. They realize their number is limited and that only a few scholars can come to them. In the invisible, however, they can reach almost unlimited numbers and it seems to be the greater work of their lives to reach out into the invisible and help all who are receptive to their teaching. The teaching of Emil laid the foundation for the work which we were to take up years later in our third expedition to these countries, during which time we lived with the masters continuously for three and one half years, traveled with them and observed their daily lives and work throughout the Far East.